I try to maintain that same mentality of collaboration and teamwork and um, creative exploration. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and today I have the great pleasure of speaking with Kirsten Quinzenberry and Melanie Thompson of Visual House. So Kirsten is the hands-on creative director and designer with over 10 years of experience in the agency world. She has worked on over 100 B2B and B2C brands across all mediums, and currently she leads the creative team at Visual House, creating new, exciting brands and experiences for the built environment. Her career experience is backed by five years of rigorous design education and training, as well as extensive world travel. Melanie is a driven, confident and enthusiastic client service professional with varied agency experience. Her experience in property marketing spans over 15 years where she has specialized in architectural visualization. Melanie's focus at Visual House is maintaining high levels of productivity, creativity, and excellent customer service. She oversees three departments and is responsible for the delivery of multiple projects across branding, design, CGI, and more recently, user experience. So this is really interesting. We've had um, Visual House on the show before, and I really think they are one of the most interesting, innovative um, visual um rendering companies marketing companies really is what they do because of the suite of services that they produce which is not just pure visualization but it's the whole gamut of um activities that are involved in building a brand around your clients building projects and i think this is really uh very important for architects to get a good insight into the kind of marketing and branding process that your clients, developer clients most definitely are going through and how your visuals and your graphics and the design work actually plays a key component into building that. So in this conversation, we discuss about property marketing. We look at the larger context. We look at how everything from how buildings get named to understanding the client's avatar. We talk about the creative process, how these images get developed, how Visual House works with the architect and the developer client or commercial client simultaneously. And we also look at some of the team management processes that are involved in delivering this kind of marketing collateral. So massively fascinating conversation. Sit back, relax and enjoy Melanie and Kirsten. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment and financial profit. If you want access for our free training on how to do this, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you want to speak directly to one of our advisors about how he might be able to help you, please follow the link in the information. Kirsten, Melanie, welcome to the Business of Architecture. How are you both? Good, thanks. Good, thank you. Yeah. Excellent. So I'm, I'm going to assume both of you are in different locations. One's you're across the pond, as they say. Melanie, you're here in the UK? Yes, I'm in London today. And um, yeah, Kirsten's over in New York. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. Based in uh, Brooklyn, Great. New York, the, the big city. Very trendy part of town. <laughs> Good. So both of you, you're, you're, um, Melanie, your project director mm-hmm. at um, Visual House and Kirsten more on the creative director aspects of it. Mm-hmm. How let's just start with how did both of you come to be working at Visual House? What what do you how would you explain what Visual House is and what is your role there? How would you describe your role? So let's start with Melanie. Well, how did I end up here? Um it was quite fortuitous actually and it was in lockdown um it was kind of the i've I've worked in architectural visualization and property marketing for 15 years um in the london market oh. and um we all kind of lost um our roles just at the start of lockdown at the agency i was at and um came across uh rob's email um and just got in touch with him and thought you know there's i was sort of was quite targeted with where I wanted to work and yeah he got back to me and we met for a coffee and then he offered me a job the next day which was pretty fortuitous because it was it was getting a bit sticky with the you know I'd had sort of three months of not working it was locked down things weren't great Mm -hmm. um and yeah started as a project manager um and went from there really excellent and how do you describe what it is that Visual House does 
Um, so I'd say we, um, it's very hard to describe actually when people say, what does your company do? But we, the, the main banner is, is property marketing. We help to mm-hmm. sell or let your space off plan. And we do multiple things that um, help you achieve that. So be it your brand, your building name, visualizations of your property, Unreal Engine, 3D walkthroughs, that kind of thing. And then our team puts that all together into usually one big package for the for the client and helps them to achieve their goals. So, and this is what I, I find so interesting about um, Visual House and why I enjoyed speaking with um, the others last time is that, you know, in the architecture space, there is loads of visualization companies like it's just saturation with but the, but but you guys are actually coming from it from the perspective of where we're marketing people's buildings mm. you're actually going in there and producing collateral which has the, the 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 purpose of promotion and marketing and letting and sales and that becomes a very valuable proposition and very much differentiates you from like just producing beautiful images though that is a a core part of what it is that you're that you're doing as well yeah Yeah. brilliant i was just going to say it's 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 rare that a company does all of that well so you get a lot of people Mm -hmm. that are really good at the branding side a lot of people that do amazing brochures if that's all you want um you know you've got different kind of levels of standards of visualization studios but we try and do the kind of luxury end of that and we do all of it well that's I think the difference yeah um a same idea we create everything for the built environment and I think one of the reasons I came to visual house is the idea that we are a full service agency that we can give our clients not just the visualizations which are incredible and so realistic but that we are creating all of those marketing tactics start to finish so from naming the building and creating the identity uh, to understanding the brand voice and how it will speak to its target audiences, to working with the architects and the engineers to make that come to life so that we're putting out a a building almost as a character (laughs) into the marketplace for anyone that wants to buy or lease. Um, And I think what's really exciting about what we're doing now is is really... um, expanding on that definition of what is is real estate what is property marketing um and really applying it more to the the built environment so not just your commercial real estate buildings and residential homes but also we have a film studio now that we are working with um we are also working on a a bit of a tourism um play as well and so redefining what that built environment is and what services we can offer Amazing. So what kind of clients do you work with? Who are, who is this kind of majority of the, the portfolio? Are you, working, are you working with the developers more or the landowners or the property owners? Or do you work with uh, we work- architects who are producing renders? or Both. 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 Definitely both. I think um, the uh, CGI team works a lot with the architecture companies to help bring those visualizations to life. And on the creative side, we work a lot more with the property developers um, and uh, those trying to market the building themselves. Um, but we work with a gamut of clients. So what are, what are some of the key components then when marketing a property what sorts of things do you have to take into consideration how do you how do you even like kind of begin with trying to understand like what it is that you're doing are you working closely with real estate brokers as well to kind of define target markets or i think it depends on what point in the conversation we get brought in we really like to Mm -hmm. get brought in at the beginning at the ideation stage when the plans are just being developed by the architects so they're Ground hasn't even been broken. Um, we're really in the idea of fundraising stage and we will come in and help name the building, um, develop uh, the brand positioning for it, figure out who that target buyer is, um, or if it's a company or sorry, commercial property, what companies would um, be appropriate here. Um, and really helping at the, the very beginnings of the project. However, we're also happy to come in later down the road. It could be that it's been an existing building. They're having trouble um, leasing it up or it has just gone through a renovation. 
that identity already exists, but it needs, you know, new collateral, new brochure. And we um, also get involved at that stage, working with the brokers and, and finding what they need to get their jobs done. Mm. And just to add Great. to that as well, like obviously budget is a factor as well. So, you know, we do really need to look at the, the budget the client has and we can kind of recommend a kind of bespoke um, shopping list, as it were, for them um, to help them kind of get the, the best out of the budget they've got. So, th- so this is very interesting. So um, imagine I'm a developer and I've got a piece of land and perhaps we've started engaging with an architect to come up with ideas and it's going to be some kind of multifamily residential unit. What what are the kind of conversations that the visual house start prompting and engaging from both architect and client? And how do you coordinate the, the kind of three, the, the three creative parties here? It's a lot, absolutely, um, and it's getting as much information as possible, understanding the vision from the developer side, um, really what they're trying to do, and then understanding how the architects are interpreting that to answer the problem, and then design gets involved to to come to that design problem and find the solution um, to really answer what we're trying to do here. Um, I, it depends on which part you're talking about. But we and Melanie can probably speak more to it. But for the visualization side, making sure that we, you know, understand the architecture plans. That also happens on the creative side. We'll clean up floor plans and um, really interpret everything that is, um, I would say, more engineering and technical, and make it more digestible to uh, your everyday audience. And someone, something that someone can look at and be like, "Oh yeah, cool. I want to move into this building. That looks great. This looks like a really." amazing place to be. And that's the kind of reactions we want of anyone looking at the creative reproduce, They're like being excited about it and really being able to visualize themselves living there or working there or whatever it is. That's very, um, quite, quite an interesting process that you're you know, you might need to be stripping out some of the technical information that an architect might be focused on. What do you find is the is the kind of uh, the difference between the imagery that an architect might produce versus the imagery that you guys are looking to produce? And is there any is there ever ever any conflicts between creative <laughs> vision or like a little bit of a little bit of healthy conflict, if you like, <laughs> between the two parties? At uh, times, sure. I think. Yeah, I think I think the images we produce are always. Um, they're going to be elevated a bit. What 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 the architects are trying to do is convey an idea, and what we're trying to do is, um, you know, get people excited about the space who actually, you know, want to spend money on it. So we have to, you know, come up with something a little bit more creative, um, something, um, you know, maybe a little bit of creative license on the size of the room, that kind of thing. But um, yeah, we would put put a lot more of sort of time and effort into different details i suppose to get the message across and how do you how do you work through the process of coming up with a name because this is really interesting and (laughs) and something like for for a lot of architects for example they might have their own name for the building and for a project and i've worked on projects before in the past where you've the architects have had a name for it and then it disappears and then the, the marketing team comes back and now it's got another name for it and there can be a little bit of a disjunct between, well, the architects might have just called it the address for starters, <laughs> or they've had a, a different idea of what the name is. And then then you've got a name, which, you know, that's going to be on the on the covers of all of the brochures and all the marketing. And that's what the public is now going to be interfacing with is the project of that name. What's that? What does that process actually involve? Um, a lot of research first and immersing ourselves in the project, mm-hmm. learning all of that information from from the architects, from the developers, understanding what the vision is, and then really getting down into the, the USPs. What are those brand differentiators? Um, what is that building going to stand for? Um, so is it that it has incredible balconies with beautiful views? And so that's something that we can lean into. Is it a space that... Uh, champions collaboration and that we need to focus on really the experience of being there. Is there any like conventions in the area where it is in terms of the location? Um, You get buildings in New York, for example, that are 
named by their numbers. And it might not seem that creative, but if the audience is like very used to um, finding buildings that way and understanding what street it's on by having that included in the name, that's something that we take into consideration. So I think there's a lot of different factors that go into it. And then once we determine really what the niche is for the building, um, coming up with uh, some ideas of creative names, throwing a lot of things at the wall and hoping one is going to stick. And then also then researching and making sure it isn't already taken in the marketplace. Um, and that great mm -hmm. idea we had actually exists for three other buildings. So um, we do try and do our due diligence of, of finding a new name that is unique, um, that is ownable for us, that looks good on the page, um, that we can turn into a great logo, and that um, is memorable and easy, easily pronounceable for um, the audience we're targeting. Um, it, it's quite interesting with like with really good marketing, the good marketing will often influence the actual product itself rather than it just being a clever wrapping for something. Do you find then that, you know, certainly if you're getting involved much earlier on in a project that you actually start to influence the, the, the building type itself or the way it's going to look and the functionality of it? How, how, does, how does that kind of interplay work? Um, so we have a project that I can think of off the top of my head that we've actually gotten involved at the early stage and the identity we've created, some of the pattern work is being infused into the architecture itself. So into some of that interior design where it becomes really holistic brand activation or marketing um, mm. in terms of being able to see it not in just a digital or print space, but also in the physical space of the building. Um, and those are tend to be like our ideal projects. Um, but I would say in another way, the architecture can inspire the branding as well. So if it's a really unique architecture design of a building um, that can come into the logo itself, we want to give pay homage to that. Um, or if there's a unique way of cladding on the outside of the building that is pattern work that we then see on a leasing folder, for example, or becomes wallpaper in a leasing suite. Um, the ideal scenario is all of it does tie together holistically from what we're doing to what the architects are doing. Mm -hmm. And how much research then do you guys do into the kind of end user or the, the kind of person who's going to be buying or renting the apartments? Quite a lot. <laughs> That's ahead, one of the main, like, I guess it's one of the main things at the start of the project. And we, we really love it when we get that time at the start of the project to kind of understand that because that is one of the kind of main pillars of, you know, of Kirsten and her team, you know, coming up with that identity is who it's for because it can be so... Right. so many different people it can be so many different things so can you give us an example of how you might how you kind of look at a client's brief do they does the client themselves know who the end market is or yeah they, they're not always sure and you're, you're helping them define it no they tend to know like depending on the area and the size and things like that they tend to know and they tend to get the sales agents from that area involved at that stage so they're really focused mm -hmm. on who they're going to target and um yeah it kind of builds from there great and so when a project comes into the the office how do you then start to decide like wh where it's going who's working on it what the strategy is gonna gonna be for it yeah that's probably one of the hardest things so it's um it depends on a lot of things. There's a lot of variables. If it's, you know, if there's a quick turnaround, we've got to get it quick in and out. Or, you know, if it's something more long term, we'll have more and, and a bigger project, we'll have more time to kind of strategize on where it goes and who does it. But we try and play people to their strengths. And, you know, we t project tends to come in and we tend to think, you know, that person would be great for that. You know, it's got their kind of like them written all over it kind of thing. And, um, we we would always try and put that person on the project if we can. And then we we also try and keep the same people on the projects creative wise and keep that kind of consistency going through. Right. And so do, they, do the projects have like different stages then where perhaps mm -hmm. you're producing uh, a, a kind of set of marketing collateral, like you were saying, at the beginning for fundraisers and for investors 
and then now you've got to change the marketing collateral because now you're not focusing so much on the on the the investor and making images for that now you're focusing on images to actually sell the property so the so it goes does it, so do you have like kind of different phases like that and it evolves yeah i think it's really interesting also that it depends on the market um the american uh real estate market uh, acts very different to the middle east real estate market in terms mm. of timelines and the point in which we're creating um, that type of collateral that you're speaking about. I would say in an American market, there is um, a longer timeline and we'll get involved, as I said, at the, the initial ideation phase for a building. And then some of what we do might be put on ice for a year and then they're ready to mm -hmm. break ground and um, have a launch event and bring us back in at that stage. Um, so it is a very much a long-term relationship, um, whereas we found in a lot of the Middle Eastern markets, they might want all of that collateral up front um, right away and will just you know, do more of a sprint um, of creating the brand first. That is always what we do, making sure that the client is aligned with us on that and then rolling out um, each of the different tactics and touch points. So your brochures, websites to digital ad campaigns, social campaigns. Um, even leasing centers, for example. Um, and uh, Melanie, I, I don't know if you want to speak to this, but the same thing happens on the CGI side as well um, in terms of an initial start. And then as the project evolves, um, it might change. And then uh, they'll need additional CGI or, or a film now, et cetera. Mm -hmm. We tend to start, you know, often with CGI's, and you probably know this, we, we would start before the design as particularly the interior design is is kind of set in stone or they've had a, a freeze on that. So we may start something and then, you know, there'll be kind of three or four rounds where things will change throughout throughout before we get to the the finals. Um, but yeah, there can be a smaller set for like a soft launch or for funding. And then there can be like a bigger marketing set that then turns into a film and lots of other things as well. So what kinds of, what, what are the kind of different types of marketing collateral then that you typically get involved in? Yeah, so we um, do a lot of different things. Um, we call them full scope projects. So a full scope project is that entire menu of items, if you think about it that way, um, where we are involved in the beginning of creating the brand and then um, brochures are really um, what we've seen for a number of years, people are still using them. Um, during the pandemic, we saw a push to digital. Um, it used to be in the real estate mm -hmm. world, you did a lot of print coffee table books um, and doing very large scale, um, very nice, beautiful print pieces. And we're seeing the start of that again now that people are out and about and actually physically going places. Um, but there has been a I would say an advancement in a digital brochure and, and implementing some web technology of buttons and linking. Um, how can we link out to a 360 visualization that the um, CGI team has done and within a digital brochure that the creative team is producing? Um, we will also work on websites. So a, a teaser site that might just be a form field and um, catching information for um, future targeting or um, full scope websites that are multi-page will do interactive stacking plans. So indicating what floor of the building an office is on um, or interactive floor plans. Um, we do interactive maps as well. So showing where a building is in an area and all of the different amenities around it, being able to toggle on and off restaurants or transportation, retail, um, anything that that audience might be interested in. Um, we also are now evolving those kind of technologies to have these interactive portals as well. So we can customize a what we call a tenant portal. Um, and it would be mostly for the commercial real estate market. They might be targeting a large client to take over a large portion or number of floors in the building. And so they want this web experience to feel tailored to that potential tenant. Um, and where we come in is doing some customizations, working in the potential tenant logo um, and making sure it feels like a really um, boutique experience, a customized experience when they land on that web page. Um, but at the end of the day, being able to deliver the information that is needed and necessary to understand what the project is um, 
we also do digital advertising, so creating banner ads or organic social media posts, Facebook and Instagram ads, um, LinkedIn as well, uh, really a whole gamut of things. Um, floor plans, I guess, is another traditional real estate one. As I said before, yeah. um, we take those technical architecture plans, clean them up, strip them back, um, relabel them, bring in colors and fonts and make them more exciting and digestible to our target audiences. Um, Do you work closely with, um, say, uh, PRs and like the and kind of getting things published and having, you know, um, you know, journalism or the kind of that sort of publication aspect of promotion or is that something that you you'd work with like you know do you have prs in house or do you have prs that you that you typically work with or that the developers bring in themselves and that you collaborate there as well we do most of the creative content creation um and then we right. would give it off to a public relations firm most of the developers that we work with already have their in-house team or another pr firm that they would work with we really try to stick to the visualization, not the actual um, public relations aspect. Right. And so things like live events or when there are kind of um, more public talks and speaking, then that would be in the domain of the PR mm -hmm. or the developer themselves. And then you'd be just producing the content to, to facilitate that and there'd be a kind of a, a, a dialogue. It's really fascinating because you guys are really uniquely positioned to be um you know to be interacting with, with lots of the different players more so than an architect in a way um and where because you're kind of right at the front face of where money is being exchanged mm -hmm. and where a lot of the value is being created in the in the property and i know in say for example in the architecture world there's a sometimes we like to deny that buildings are financial instruments but they are uh, primarily that's what that's what's that's what's happening here, and so the, what the, the service that you're providing here is is really really interesting, and very unique because it's the it's the place where there's so much value being created around the building in order for it to be sold and um, packaged and and understood by other people. Do you um, find then that are you pre predominantly producing collateral for sales? and purchasing or do you produce collateral as well to say sell the idea to a local jurisdiction or to assist with getting planning permission yeah we do both uh, i would say we definitely do both most of the time it's already an approved um project and you know we're just mm -hmm. helping move it full steam ahead but we have certainly been involved in the um ideation registration permissions phase um and that the project changes down the road um mm -hmm. but we're there at the forefront trying to get the local municipality local government to sign off um whether that be creating those um, visualizations of what the building is going to look like or helping to create a um marketing piece that they can use as a leave behind or visual demonstration presentation for those meetings yeah, probably more on the right. visualization side. That would be something we would do for sure. Um, just kind of still images for planning, um, but it's not a, it's not a massive part of what we do. Um, how does it work now? You guys have got a number of different offices all around the globe. You're working with projects in the Middle East, in New York, in the UK, in in Asia. How? is all this working for you as an organization how do you like um how, how you know from your from your experience how, how are, you, are you working with kind of remote teams that have got different skill sets or is there like you know the guys in new york work only on the projects that are in new york and the teams that are in other bloke in the uk only work on the uk how is it working internally and how do you choreograph if you like mm -hmm. different skill sets mm -hmm. in a inside of a global organization that's a great question. And um, it's not easy, but I think we are doing it really well at the moment. So mm. I think what happened was with, with lockdown, we obviously went completely remote and we then had to find new ways of communicating and, you know, um, working together, collaborating, which, you know, involved a lot of kind of hit and miss research and this works and this doesn't work. But 
Um, I think kind of six months into it, we were doing it. We do, at the moment, a lot of people are still remote, but we do have offices um, based in London and a base in New York uh, and a base in Miami. I think I think that's it at the moment. Um, so they're being built up so people can start going in more regularly. <clears throat> um, and we meet up kind of once a month, like for sure we'll meet up once a month and have a kind of collaboration day. But a lot of what we do is is it's really good communication and it's, you know, finding the right way to communicate. You know, you don't need to tell me too much, you don't need to, but you have to tell me, you know, and people are learning what that, where that kind of sweet spot is and what they, you know, how they need to do it. So we use kind of chat, we use calls, we use um, internal software and, you know, it's, it's worked really well for us and we've been really lucky. And I think the best thing about it has been, it's opened us up to to getting talent from all over the world. You know, you don't have to have someone that can commute mm-hmm. into an office in London anymore. You know, if they live too far out, you you know, you're really restricting yourself. So it's opened us up to some amazing talent. And um, at the moment, we're kind of building up our Unreal Engine department. And we've got people that, you know, we potentially wouldn't have had in, in countries where, that you know, they are um, excelling at it. And we probably wouldn't have been able to get those people otherwise which is great so so this is quite amazing actually and and very forward thinking of having a, a business which is kind of location independent in many ways um because it opens you up to a whole new world of talent across and around uh around the around the globe so how does it work in terms of like there are you do actually have physical locations in each place yeah. but the majority of this not everyone is working there right no yeah. so we've we everyone's got the option to work there and a lot of people choose choose not you, you've got certain people that love to be in a room with other people and certain people that are actually really really happy and kind of thriving at home and doing really well and you know we're finding we're getting more out of people because you know you don't have to knock off at five o'clock and do that two hour commute you know so you may get a little bit more work out of people actually because you know they'll sit at their desk till six then and they've only got to go downstairs to have their dinner so i think that's that's worked really well for the business but we want to give people the option to be together because some people do need it and i think the people that have kind of suffered with this are the younger generation and the you know the juniors and you know that time spent in the office is really really valuable like learning from the more kind of senior person next to you and looking over their shoulder and seeing what they're doing you they're the ones that are missing out i think for for my generation it's it's not been you know it's been a good thing but i think we need to Mm -hmm. give people that back so that we can sort of develop the next the next generation really yeah Mm -hmm. uh, kirsten from a creative standpoint how do you manage that because obviously you know the, this idea of kind of being around a table and generating ideas how do you facilitate that with remote remote teams yeah so i still treat it like we're working in an office and i make my team get on video calls just like this all the time um probably to a point of annoyance but i think it's really important to actually talk out ideas to be able to act like we're sitting around a table and throwing ideas at a wall um i There's all this technology today to review creative and give feedback, and we use all of those tools. Um, But certainly, I I find the best scenario is jumping on a video call and chatting through something and really making sure that we are having those points of communication, as Melanie was saying, and um, really making sure it feels like a cohesive team. Um, Half of my team is based in London. Half of my team is based here in New York. Uh, The New York team will get together once in a while in office. So we have that FaceTime. But I try to treat them all equally, that we are a collaborative team um, and that they all work on projects all over the world um, and that they're they're working together. Um, So it might be it's definitely different than when I started out in design, as Melanie was saying, um, you know, working with a team in an office all day, every day. But we, I try to maintain that same mentality of collaboration and teamwork and um, creative exploration. Amazing. Melanie, you, you were saying um, you've been working in property marketing for around about 15 years. Um, um, could you talk to us a little bit about what 
have been the major shifts and changes that you've seen in property marketing in terms of like the kinds of ways that people are approaching it and what do you see in the future good question i think i think the technology really has been the biggest shift so you know i look back at cgi images i worked on 15 years ago that i project managed and i just think we thought that was amazing and it you look at it and it is just awful <laughs> Um, well, not awful because someone did that and it was their work and it was great, but at the time, but you just think <laughs> things have changed so much. And then sometimes you'll even look back at an image to, from two years ago and see so many things that, you know, I'm, I'm applying this just to images at the moment, but, um, but yeah, and you'll see things even from an image two years ago where you can see the big, the big shifts and the big changes and think, oh, you know, we've got technology now that, you know, plugins that mean that that doesn't happen anymore. Um, so I think that's been the biggest shift and, and the moving to Unreal as well, having this kind of environment that you can literally just explore. And it's it feels like that's what people have been wanting for years. And they've been ch trying to do it by still images, trying to do it by film um, and never really quite getting mm -hmm. it. And now we're getting this this thing that everyone can kind of um, really explore. Um, so I think it's been the... Um, it's been the tech, I would say. It's been the biggest thing. And what's next, did you say? Yeah. Um, I think developing that Unreal environment, I think it's just going to get, you know, it's, they're being updated, you know, weekly, all new kind of plugins that are coming in and, and making things easier. Um, but I also think I've been, re you know, doing a lot of research about AI, um, which I'm, I'm quite obsessed with at the moment and listening to a lot of podcasts and trying out lots of things. And I think that's really going to change things, for, particularly for project managers. Not, not I don't know on the creative side, Kirsten would have to speak to that, but on the project management side already, we're seeing we're seeing tools that kind of going to kind of help us. I know that's not specific to the property industry, but um, mm -hmm. certainly I think it's going to change things for the better, for sure. Yeah. Well, then, this is a very interesting thing. It was actually going to be my next question was what, what do you see the role of AI mm -hmm. actually being involved in, 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 in all aspects of the marketing process? So from, from the project management side to copywriting to the actual mm -hmm. production of, of collateral. And are you guys already using it? I think the biggest thing that AI can do for creative is help to jumpstart the ideas. Um, I think, a, a big, big issue that creatives struggle with is just that roadblock at the beginning of like, you know, wh where, where can I get these ideas generated? H how can I get the creative juices flowing? And I think AI is helpful to just kind of throw a bunch of ideas at the wall and inspire inspiration. Um, you know, we saw that initially, I would say with like Pinterest 10 years ago of like seeing all of these ideas out there and you're like, oh, okay, right. This world is bigger than what my world is in terms of like seeing things on a daily basis. Um, and I, we've seen it in terms of technology, as Melanie was speaking about with Unreal, um, programs like Photoshop, there's so much embedded AI technology that it's not like a chat GPT where you're having a robot do it, but the technology that AI is um, improving what we can do in terms of Photoshopping images, creating new patterns, really speeding up our processes for us, um, really just... Uh, is incredible, and I think that is definitely where we're we're headed in the future. With that, um, really, is just a help to what we're already doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then, from from the project management side, what what do you see? There are some possibilities. Um, I mean, I'm already sort of looking into things that you know, with around scheduling, and is there a way to kind of um, you know streamline that that uh, you know that we can do because that's that that is quite time consuming actually kind of building a visual schedule um i mean we use it for we do use it for copy sometimes because obviously we're not copywriters but we might be writing a you know a summary or a report about a project or um you know that kind of thing so i think the main problem for me with ai at the moment is i can't keep up with what's next so every you know i'll spend think oh, i'll spend a couple of you know hours today looking at what could possibly benefit us and it, what I looked at last week is already out of date so I think it's you know it's kind of a full-time job to kind of research how our AI can help you so maybe I can get an AI bot to help me with that I don't know um, <laughs> but yeah it's it's I, I definitely like think it's thing. it's like here and it's like I think we can use it and it's just finding out exactly what those areas are really 
Amazing. Brilliant. Well, I think that's a perfect place to conclude the, the conversation. What's next for Visual House for the rest of 2023 and next year? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I mean, we're, yeah, we're, we're growing fast, which is um, exciting. Um, we're working on all these kind of new Unreal projects, which are clients are loving and we're just kind of getting to the point now where we're kind of delivering final products and people are using them um so that's really exciting and i don't really know where that's going to lead us um but yeah just keep growing the business and keep having a you know a happy team and getting the best talent to to work with us yeah i would say the same thing just continuing to improve on what we're doing already expanding our offerings and uh finessing what we're already known for very cool is with the unreal engine is there um the ability for people to sample some of it so like you know if, if i've got an oculus quest for example are there spaces that i can go and inhabit like online or how do you how do people do that I think not at the moment, but eventually, yes, because we, we, we're still kind of in the stages of where we're delivering it to our clients. Um, I mean, we can we can definitely show you something like on screen. Um, but yeah, eventually it will be, yeah, I think everyone will be able to access what we're building for sure. Amazing. Awesome. Brilliant. Well, Kirsten, Melanie, thank you very much for your time and uh, sharing your expertise in the really exciting world of um, what you guys are doing. Um, really appreciate it. It's been a fantastic conversation. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much, Ryan. And that's a wrap. And don't forget, if you want to access your free training to learn how to structure your firm or practice for freedom, fulfillment and profit, please visit Smart Practice Method. Dot com or if you'd like to speak to one of our advisors directly follow the link in the information the views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and i make no representation promise guarantee pledge warranty contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable <laughs>